When we were invited to the Canadian Canoe Museum for an exclusive tour, we couldn't resist. We headed to Peterborough, Ontario to check out the over 100 boats on display in the main exhibit area, including tons of artifacts, lots of hands-on interaction, great videos, and lots of photos. As well as a special tour of the back warehouse that houses thousands and thousands of artifacts, each with their own unique story. My name is James Raff and I'm the Executive Director of the Canadian Canoe Museum, which is a portrait of Canada like you would find absolutely nowhere else. We have, uh, as part of our collection, about 600 canoes and a whole lot of other artifacts that come from east, from west, from north, and that are all about people's relationship with place in Canada. And um, the collection itself was uh, started by our founder, Kirk Whipper, uh, and it has gone on to be created by staff and volunteers and many people from across the country and has become a vibrant museum uh, in Peterborough, Ontario, but it is also uh, an increasingly significant hub for canoeing in the country. And uh, we're actively finding ways through traveling exhibits through our website. We just opened a uh, members only website with content that you can't get anywhere else that uh, in fact if you lived in Peterborough there's content uh, now available for our members on the website that uh, is really quite exciting that you can't get anywhere else. But it's a museum that tells the story of Canada but in that story of Canada is our, our lessons about cooperation, collaboration between First Nations, Métis, Inuit, between French and English, and uh, those lessons are lessons that I think go on and go forward, lessons about paddling together, about working together, about remembering who we are so that we can make sense of what's happening today and chart a course for tomorrow. So we, we develop a new exhibit every year. Uh, this year was a lot of fun. We, we took a bunch of really odds and sods canoes and kayaks that are in our collection. And the common theme to these is that these are boats that were designed to break down to become even more portable than canoes that you and I might expect to be. One of, the, one of the crazier stories we came across when we were researching up this exhibit is this character named uh, Peter Halkett in the uh, 1840s was inspired um, by the need for northern explorers, particularly in the Canadian Arctic, to have a boat with them um, at all times. Uh, river crossings in the Arctic and the loss of your boats and so on could prove life and death. And John Franklin's trip up north overland to chart the uh, Northwest Passage from shore um, was the, the chief inspiration. So Halkett comes up with this great idea to ba make a, a garment that people would otherwise normally be traveling with and have it turn into a canoe if you ever needed to. Um, so what we have done here, this is not an original of course, but it's an oil cloth and wool working model of Peter Halkett's boat cloak. Uh, it's, a, it's much like a ship's cloak that a, an officer would wear on watch on a, on a ship but there's a valve sewn into the seam and inside, if you look here, inside the boat is actually an inflate, inside the cloak is actually an inflatable boat uh, which, um, which could be inflated when you need it. And the, the gentleman, of course, traveling with a cane could unthread the handle of his walking stick and thread on a paddle blade and he'd be good to go uh, on the water.
So here we are in the, the Trade and Alliance Gallery, which really pays tribute to the fact that European arrival and interests in, in um, the economy or hunt, the trapping of beavers and the, the markets in Europe was all based upon the relationships and the alliances with First Nations peoples. Uh, we've got this great exhibit right next to me here of a what's called a North Canoe. It's a large birch bark canoe used for traveling into the interior of the continent. Uh, full of trade goods, be exchanged for furs and then they'd be beating back again. This canoe is loaded according to a bill of lading just like a transport truck would travel today. You know, they're not stopping to fish and hunt along the way. This is a long haul carrier and it's full of trade goods uh, and also reminds you just how, how difficult and brutish this work was. Um, it was much like being a, a draft animal for a, a, a mega company of their day. So I'm in a, another one of our 10 galleries. <clears throat> I'm standing in what's called the It Wasn't All Work Gallery. This is an exhibit that pays tribute really to a movement that begins in the mid 1800s. Uh, extra wealth, leisure class, uh, need for time outside and uh, in, in activity, people are canoeing like never before. And this is not First Nations people and this is not the work culture of say voyageurs or prospectors or surveyors but this is canoe moving into mainstream society and what's really interesting about this is this is the the a period when um, a lot of the canoeing movements that we know of today marathon canoeing sprint racing canoeing sailing canoeing uh, long distance canoeing and just recreational boating. Uh, this, is, this is the time when th this is born. Um, uh, we have craft here that have uh, record players in them for going out and courting with your, uh, with your bow or your bow. We have canoes rigged for sail. Beside me is a hull. It's stripped right now of its sailing rig. But this is a two-masted, high-performing 1630 or a, a sailing canoe. Here's, a, here's the beginning of all of the branches of canoeing that we know of today and we're paying tribute to those uh, with the watercraft around me. So we're back in the storage collection here. Uh, this is a collections facility for the Canoe Museum. This used to be a, a factory making outboard motors and now uh, this 30,000 squ square foot room uh, serves to house all of the collection of watercraft and artifacts that are not on display. This for me is the most exciting part of the museum and it's not generally open to the public uh, but we do do guided tours. We're doing a, a tour back here in, in September for our members and this is also I guess the idea factory for new exhibits. We have almost 500 canoes from around the world here unpacked now. They're open on display, they're secured, they're mounted, they're stabilized and they're just waiting to be uh, understood by our guests and, uh, and researchers too, as we have researchers coming in from around the world to have a look at our collection and, and to start making connections. These are canoeing traditions found around the world. Uh, canoeing is not a Canadian concept alone, of course. Uh, the 16-foot pointed at both ends canoe that we might see in a park today is one branch, I would argue, on a much larger family tree. And one of the, one of the challenges and one of the exciting things for us is to say, where does this story take us? Where does the idea of the canoe uh, lead us? And we have incredible examples of canoeing traditions that are quite unfamiliar to a lot of us. And they really give us a better understanding of what it is that we know and love about the paddling traditions today. So here's the Canadian Canoe Museum. We have this great collection of stuff that's the past. We show it to you, that's the present, and we hope that it inspires you to go on and, and understand more about this, and that's the future. And people often ask us when they come here, 
this is great. I love, I love what you do. What can I do? And, and the thing we often say to them is, join us. Join as a member, because that does several things. First of all, it shows us that you support us, and we appreciate that. It lets us show other people that you support us, and so that's leverage for us to get more people involved. And it also lets us start a conversation with you and tell you what we do, get you involved, bring you back for a course, get you more involved in the museum. You can come and volunteer. You can also help take our story out across the country. So the short answer is join us, and you can do that online at canoemuseum.ca. So we hope to see you soon.